tonight um, has a couple of public hearings. Um, so just uh, for folks here for Fawn Hill Road, uh, just uh, wait your turn. And folks from Mountain Road, wait your turn. Um, so with that, uh, I'll go to the approval of the July 25th, 2023 meeting minutes. I have a motion to accept. I move the approval of the July 25th meeting minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, very good. All right, so first on the agenda tonight will be off Fawn Hill Road. I'm just curious by show of hands, who's here for Fawn Hill Road? All right, almost everybody. All right, um, so that's good. So we'll get that out of the way so then we can get you folks on moving. Um, who, who are the Fortes? Okay, very good. All right, so um, tonight we have Michael Forte, 151 Fawn Hill Road, area of variance new construction on section 204, block three, lot 14. There'll be a public hearing. Uh, Deborah, I assume all form expenses and mail receipts have been received? Do you have the issue? Thank you. Okay, they are now. Very good. All right, the uh, notice was given that the Zoning Board of Appeals of the Town of Tuxedo will hold a public hearing at the Tuxedo Town Hall, 1 Temple Drive, Tuxedo, in the County of Orange on October 24th at 7 p.m. or soon thereafter as possible on the application of Michael Lynn Forte, owner of record of the property which is subject to this proceeding, more particularly Section 204, Block 3, Lot 14 in a R3 zoning district located at 151 Fawn Hill Road, Tuxedo. For area variance from the bulk regulations of the zoning code of the town of Tuxedo and to allow for the construction of a single family home. The application was available for review in the town building department and the address the person may attend the public hearing. Every effort will be made to ensure this hearing is accessible to persons with disability. Posted October 6, 2023, signed by myself, Chair of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, I see we have the proper applications. We have our receipts. We have our documents. Um, so what I'd like to do is I'd like to make a motion to uh, open the public hearing for uh, Forte's 151 Fawn Hill Road. May I have a second? Second. Uh, um, Mr. and Mrs. Forte or representative? The floor is yours. I'm Darren Dorsey. Darren. Um, I did the plot plan right. for the Forte's. Um, what they're proposing is a um, single family home, 47 feet by 27 feet deep. Um, on their lot, um, it's going to be approximately, I believe, 1,300 square feet. It's in the R3 zone, which requires a front yard setback of 50 feet and side yard setbacks of 50 feet. We're proposing a front yard setback to the porch of 41 feet and a side yard um, setback of 42 feet on the uh, right side of the house as you're looking uh, from the road. Um, we're, we're pulling it. We, and um, I just want to mention also that the actual setback to the house itself will be 48 feet, but the porch is going to be on so I believe it has to be front yard setback. We're pulling it forward uh, 10 feet to try to avoid. There's a lot of rock on that lot, so we're trying to minimize the uh, rock excavation as much as possible. And the uh, lot width is um, at the building line is uh, only about 130 feet wide. Um, so holding the setbacks of 50 feet, it only leaves about 39 feet for the house. Um, the house is 47 feet. That's why we're uh, proposing uh, the, uh, I believe it's like an eight foot variance on the uh, Right side of the house. All right, and now also um, we'll need a variance for minimum setback on both side yards. Oh, uh, right, just under the All right, uh, anything else? I'd just like to mention that um, <coughs> most of those lots um, in that subdivision are 100 to 130 <coughs> feet wide as is. So just looking at the aerials. A majority of them all are less than the 50 feet from the side yards, existing houses. Um, I was told, I'm not sure if this is true, that at one time the setback in that zone was 40 feet. 
and it was up, up zone to 50 feet. Um, I'm not really sure what the side yard setbacks were in that zone. But. <clears throat> was there ever a house on this? Uh, no. Never? No. I think it's almost one of the last vacant lots in that suburb. All right, just um, so the public is understanding of the process, uh, we will, we meaning the board, be provided the opportunity to ask questions of the applicant, um, at which point when the board has concluded their questions, I'll ask for public comments. Um, and then I'll go back for concluding comments from the board. Um, I would just caution, we are the zoning board, we're not the planning board. Um, there are certain elements of the application people are probably concerned about, drainage might be one of them. Those are typically handled by the planning board. Um, you can make your point, but there's really nothing you know, we can necessarily do. We're here for the proposed variances um, on the side yard and the setbacks and um, what's the, the front yard. So um, while I may understand your concerns, this board doesn't handle those particular issues. So um, that said, our building department uh, assistant here and our attorney also is on the planning board, but they're not here necessarily to take planning board comments tonight, but uh, I just want to add that clarification. Um, I, you know, I've been on the lot, I think it is the last lot up there. I, most of those lots, and we have done a number of um, uh, actions up in that area, mostly because the lots are all non-conforming to what's on those lots. Um, so zoning changes took place at some point after most of those lots were, or most of those uh, buildings were constructed. Um, doesn't make it right or wrong, but um, to your point, there's, there's generally non-conformity up there to begin with. Um, I don't have any particular questions. Um, I guess the only comment I would make, but I, it doesn't appear reasonable, I've looked at the lot, was if you tried to move the building forward, you get you deal with the setback out front, but you might be able to get side yard, but you're only looking at eight foot on side yard. So um, I need to walk the lot. I, I, I'm familiar with the topography. Um, so I, 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 it looks like it's about 1,600 square foot based on what I saw in the plots. But other than that, uh, I don't have any other significant question. Um, I'll go down the, the board here, uh, Russ. No, I don't. I just want to know if there was ever a house on there at one time. <clears throat> one time I thought. Um, do you have any drawings of the, of the house as it's designed or as it's assumed to be designed? I do. Uh, I mean, we, we see that we see the layout on the on the map, but I was just wondering if we if there's any sort of sketch of what the house will would look like sitting on the, that particular property, like an elevation. Yeah, an elevation. yeah, something something other than just a flat 2D map of the. It does not show the porch, but. <clears throat> okay. Just a uh, ramp type of ranch. That's a side. Yeah, this is the front. That's the front. That's the front. Okay. front door. There'll be a, okay. a porch. Push there. Okay. That, if that's where we mainly need the variance to the porch. Porch will be a dormer off the front door? A porch. Yeah, yeah it'll have it over it. Okay. So the, the design is not particularly contemporary. No. No. I mean, there. I, I mean, I, they can uh, talk to the colors. If you know. No, no, not the colors. But I was just, you know, I I, I drove the neighborhood. I've been there before. And it's a beautiful neighborhood with all sorts of different homes, with different a lot of contemporary homes to the to the right and to the left, not so much. But it's going to be a standard sort of two story house. Uh, one story. One story. A basement garage. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. No questions for me. Sure. Oh, I didn't hear what you said about the garage. It, the garage is going to be underneath side load um, ranch with a garage mm -hmm. basement. Mm -hmm. And what was the reason why you you couldn't um, go? You didn't want to go up 
Maybe make it a little smaller so you wouldn't need the variance. Well, we don't want to go up because we're older, so we just want one floor. <laughs> well, that's what we're downsizing. We downsize, we're so we just. Like such a small house. Yeah. Just her two bedroom. Two bedrooms. Yeah, two bedroom, two bedroom. I don't have any further questions. No, no more questions for me, Frank. Okay. Um, so again, for the public, please make sure you sign in, number one. Two, when you make a comment, if you would state your name and address for the record. And just in the interest of doing this with some semblance of order, I'll start with you and we'll kind of pretend we're in school, go down that row and then come around the back row with the fortes and whoever's next to them in class. So. And if they can use the microphone, that would be uh, Yeah, I, um, do we have anyone on? No, this is just for being recorded. Oh, okay. For public viewing later. All right, so maybe we can just pass the microphone around that view. The other question we had all along was- uh, they, they Just grab the mic so we yeah. can get it. Unfortunately, it's not for us to hear, it's for the... And important. your name and address for the record? Yeah, yeah. name and address. Thank you. My name's Ken Cantor. The only thing, we're right across the street from you. Um, the, only thing, the only concern we had was the height of the building. And a ranch doesn't create any problem for us, and we're fine. Okay, thank you. I didn't hear uh, your Andrew address. Glant, I'm uh, again across oh, the street. Hold on, hold on. What was your address? 146 on your road. 146, okay. Thank you. Uh, Andrew Glant, again, 146 Fawn Hill Road, right across the street. Uh, the only question that I would have, not knowing anything about this, does it affect the gas line that's coming from this, by moving the house forward, does it affect the gas line that comes into our house? Well, if you're across, the, so the gas line will be on the road. On the road, yeah. Right, and then in terms of the service, the service tap will be at the main, and if you're across the street, the service tap will go to your house, if they take gas service, there'll be a new pit dug in the road, and they'll make a tap and bring it to their house. Okay. Yeah, but it shouldn't. It won't. It we'll won't impact your off. service. Sometimes when you see houses side by side, they might tap off an existing service. But if you're across the street, that's not going to happen. Okay. That's all I wanted to know. Thank you. Yep. Hi, Mark Fermanic um, at 155, uh, right next door. Uh, I'm just wondering, are you going to be doing any grading since you're only going like halfway up and that's a little bit steep there? Yeah, we're going to be grading. Them. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Probably a boulder wall or something on the store. I think Darren showed that. Out. I saw it on the plans. Yeah. That's what I was wondering. Okay. 140 Farm Hill Road, the India for the ladies. Um, I live directly, basically, in my driveway.
again, it would be beautiful job we could have spoken just a problem. And the big storm we had, the guy had a guard, a gout in the, on the gravel, with all the gravel we washed out. They had to put another 18. Well, I, I, I know you believe in the x ray? Yeah. yeah. Ah, cool. So I live next door to So I, I believe that if the thing, so even if it's done properly, as a guy did on the corner, eventually you guys are going to get watered on that water wall. And there's something that can be done. Cutting trees down is my main objection. One thing. Right? So to me, nobody's thinking about it. And to create all these problems. So, so you have a fairly deep lot, relatively. I assuming you're only clearing where you're doing but we got a clearing and grading permit from the town. Um, right, but we're disturbing maybe. Yeah, it's a third it's a, of the third. Yeah, you know, it's a level of disturbance. And uh, I mean, they mark the trees that they're taking down. They're not clear cut in the entire, just where the house site right. is. So. Right. I'm sorry. Where do you live in in relation? One forty. One forty. One four zero. One four zero. Okay. Right at the street, directly the Across the street. <clears throat> yeah, I'm still gonna be great name. You know, but I'm just, I'm just, uh, what I'm bringing this up was a concern, mm -hmm. okay? Because when I moved here 36 years ago, to cut a tree down, you had to get a board, board and approve it, you know? Right now, if they go in, I, I, I guess, I don't know, they don't understand the, the philosophy of the area, I don't know. But cutting every tree down just to have a lawn, which serves, I don't know, like it, that's their problem and do what they want, obviously, but they have some respect for the surroundings too. That's my concern. All right. I, I, all I can offer is, according to the applicant, they only intend to disturb where they intend to do construction, so at least two thirds of the lot will stay wooded. Yeah. So we're not planning on doing anything, but we're going to have some zones. We want to live. Good, great. <laughs> and I can tell you, I'm here by in laws. My name's Bill Stallman, here at the company, and I'm Bill Hill Landscape. I do a lot of work up there. I did all those jobs that you're just talking about, fixing the drainage, putting yeah. the pipe in the people's yards, all that kind of stuff there. So I'm very it took me, to me, I, I don't, if anything, it would take some of my driveway. I hope that's okay. But the, 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 land, the land thing, if you water over there and you go to it, it's just, uh, right now, it concentrates in some of those two driveways. One is smart. And the house below, because the drain, the second sewer uh, drain, is 200 feet away. I walked it three, four times, counted. So, that's, that's okay. All right. I, I, I will just uh, offer for the record, um, since we're on that topic, we do have a letter that came in from Mr. Dine. It was on 137 Fawn Hill who expresses similar concerns about drainage as you do and uh, something about property values, but I'm not really sure yeah, how that goes. They cut all the trees down and all the yeah. But this, it sounds like these, these folks don't intend to do that. I don't, you know, it's killing me. I live the house next to me. This is a beautiful landscape. And now what the Talk so, this is my woods. I go over there, pick it up every day. <laughs> so, that is, I, it's something that will always look, you know? Right. And I mean, I'm not trying to educate people about that because it's all people's own preferences. But, you know, it's a lot of trees that shouldn't be cut. They cut them for what reason? I don't know. Okay. It's a uh, little behind you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I have no questions. Very good. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions from just, just a, Yeah, go ahead. Just a clarification. So the trees that are marked with the orange ribbon, those are the ones you're gonna take out completely? Mm -hmm. Okay. About how many trees is that? Twenty seven. Okay. Big trees. The yes. big ones. Right. Yeah, the little ones. Right. 
Any other questions from the board? You just recently purchased this property? July 14th. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you're not from the area? We're from, we're 45 minutes away right now. We're living in Cornwall, but we were up in Highlands. My son-in-law and my daughter live right around the corner. That's why it worked out perfect for us. And our grandson was just born, so. Oh, oh congratulations. So we just want to be close. Mm -hmm. so worked out perfect. His lot went up for sale. And Bill's lived here forever, so he checked it out and said, yeah, he'd be able to landscape it. And you're, you're planning on living there year-round? Absolutely. If we both don't work, so. Mm -hmm. Come on, just ask the question outright. <laughs> I know what you're going to do. I said I could have used this. <laughs> just, just wondering. Yep. <laughs> and I can make a comment regarding trees. I, I personally love trees as well. Um, but I had to cut down trees on my lot because I had to um, destroy sure. my cars. That's no, that, that's no yeah. problem. You have to do it. You, you, know? you do have you, to. You know, when I, when I come here, when I, again, 36 years, I worked at the office in Southwest, I found it with more than 2,000 sugar maids. <clears throat> now, how many there are now? One. Yeah. And I bet you the guy who owns it doesn't know. He's hiding. Those are valuable trees. I think that Bamsat would be beautiful. You know, they just. Yeah. I haven't even been to the top of the property, so I can't even tell you. But supposedly it's beautiful up behind there. We don't plan on disturbing anything but the front to put our house. That's it. Thank you. That was all I had wanted to ask. Okay. All right, and again, for the record, uh, we do have uh, a written comment that was provided by a resident. Um, that will be entered into the uh, record uh, with Deborah. Um, all right, hearing no other further comments, I'll make a motion to close the public hearing for uh, 151 Fawn Hill Road. Second, please. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so we um, obviously have before us the uh, three variances. Um, the applicant's requesting a setback variance for the minimum front yard. That variance would be nine feet. Applicants were um, uh, requesting a side yard setback um, variance of eight feet and both yard setback also eight feet. Um, so those are the three variances that are before this board. Uh, the application in terms of CICRA, um, we received a short form, uh, but no further environmental review is necessary. Uh, this does not trigger uh, the 239 review, so no 239 review is necessary. Uh, however, as we uh, look to make a determination, we have to consider the five-factor test in granting area variances. And in making our determination on the application of the area variance board, must consider the following, which I'll provide an answer, and feel free to agree or disagree with how I answer these, question, these questions. First question, whether an undesirable change will be produced in the character of the neighborhood or a detriment to nearby properties will be created by the granting of the area of variance. I would offer the answer is no. Whether the benefit sought by the applicant can be achieved by some method feasible for the applicant to pursue other than the area of variance. Again, I believe looking at what's being proposed here, the answer to that question also would be no. Whether the requested area variance is substantial, uh, I just, as you all know on this board, I tend to consider anything short of a few inches to be substantial. Um, obviously, that does not um, play into our, or it does not determine necessarily whether the variance is granted or not, but I'm going to say the area variance, three variances of eight foot, eight foot, nine foot are substantial. Whether the proposed variance will have an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental condition in the neighborhood or district, uh, the answer to that, in my opinion, is no. And whether the alleged difficulty was self-created, which consideration shall be relevant to the decision of the Board of Appeals, but shall not necessarily preclude the granting of the area of variance. And, and obviously it's self-created as um, they're looking to build on this lot in the manner that they're looking to build. So the answer is yes. 
Hearing uh, no other uh, disagreements, we'll have those recorded. Um, what I'd like to offer in lieu of going through each one of the three variances is to make a motion to accept the variances as noted in our attorney's memo to this board dated October 17, 2023. I have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank, Thank you so much. We're hoping yeah. next week to treat you November 1st. And then we're hoping probably January at the family. Sarah Mitchell. I'm sorry. Well, Sarah Mitchell applicant. Yes. 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 As you can tell, I, you, I know how to clear a room. So. Yeah, I guess so. All right, we have a second public hearing tonight. This will be Christopher Mitchell, Nine Mountain Road. It's area variance and for a proposed addition, section 213, block three, lot 10. All forms, expenses, and receipts received. Um, I do not believe I have received the certified maps. Uh, I, I don't believe that's correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Our office did not do it. Uh, yeah, he did them himself, and so no, I do not have. All right, so we I'm can, we relatively cannot... sure that you nailed them, but yeah. All right, so we, can, so we can't, um, yeah, make a final, final decision without the receipts. All right. So we'll, we'll go through the motions and get to where we can don't get. Don't say to Kelly. <laughs> I have, don't Kelly for a long time. All right. Uh, notice is hereby given that the Zoning Board of Appeals Town Tuxedo will hold a public hearing at the Tuxedo Town Hall, One Temple Drive, Tuxedo in the County of Orange on October 24th at 7 p.m. or soon thereafter. On the application of Christopher Mitchell, owner of the record, owner of record of the property which is subject to this proceeding, more particularly Section 213, Block 3, Lot 10 in an R3 zoning district at Nine Mountain Road Tuxedo. For area variances for the bulk regulations of the zoning code of the town of Tuxedo and to allow for the construction of an addition to an ex existing single family home. Applications available for review at the building department. Interested people may attend. Every effort it will be made to ensure that accessibility is provided to persons with disability. October 13th, signed by myself, Chair of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, we have the proper applications that have been provided. We had a short form EAF that had been provided. And um, with that, I'll make, are you Christopher Mitchell? Or no, uh, my name's David Nimako. Uh, I'm the owner of the design firm, uh, or AE firm, to, that uh, prepared the plot plan and also prepared the architectural plans for the addition. Okay, so uh, I'll make a motion to uh, Open the public hearing. Second, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. The floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much. So, uh, the Chris Mitchell is uh, proposing to add in a family room addition to the back of his house. The existing house is a bi level, and uh, he would like to add a, approximately an 800 square foot family room that would be located towards the west of the west and back of the house so the that would be in, in the on the plan so that would be to the upper left corner why is it located in this portion or in this part of the property for several reasons one is the bedrooms are located in the by level towards uh, the right or towards on the right side of plan right so putting the addition on that side would block uh, the bedrooms and their windows, which are needed for egress and light and ventilation. But in addition to that, it, towards the right side of the back of the house, there exists a large rock uh, boulder that's embedded into the earth. And he did get costs uh, or pricing to try to remove it, and it would become burdensome to do so, uh, to excavate it out, uh, have to probably be cut up, carted away, 
the hole filled with fill and things of that nature, and it, it's, it's become uh, quite a task to do so. So we're asking the board to please entertain this addition as we show it towards the upper um, left um, and back of the house. It will not obstruct any of the functions of the existing house, and uh, yet it does create uh, two variances, as I was mentioned, uh, the side yard setback and the lot development uh, uh, requirement, which is, which is um, uh, I think the code allows 25%. With this addition, we would be up to, um, I believe, 27%. All right. So I'll, I'll just comment with the board's um, understanding. There's actually going to be six variances. Um, we have existing nonconformities. It's the uh, practice of this board to memorialize nonconformities as accepted variances. So. So, though you're creating variances, we'll also memorialize the existing nonconformity as the existing So, uh, I, I noticed that, so since I did not go in the backyard, so I didn't see the rock, I, I assumed you kind of shifted a little bit because of the L lot behind it, and then sort of like directly behind the addition is sort of the woodlands that so goes up, I guess, to related to the property. Um, Still so uphill. Yeah, right. Um, but the, the main reason for the shift is due to uh, a rock outcropping or something back there. I've, I've been on that lot before, yeah. and it's, uh, it's I, I, I was there a to ledge that. more than I'd call it a boulder. Oh, okay. Yeah. Ledge. All right. That's huge. Yeah. That's huge. Caution. And, and it's not rippable shale. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. It's, it's, yeah it's it would be substantial to try to excavate it. Okay. Yeah, I... I, I would have expected anyone next door would have been here if there's any concerns and not heard anything. In, in I spoke to him about that and he yeah. said they were all for the, okay. the neighbors are all for the. Yes. And the, the, the house isn't right. big, I know that. And it's, yeah. Yeah, it's, the house isn't big. And, no. And, the, the house is small. Yeah. The footprint is 800. Yeah. It's a, basically. The footprint's 800. The footprint's yeah, 20 by 40, yeah. roughly. Exactly. Yeah. Did somebody I, say that the neighbors were supportive, did you say? Russ did. Russ was, I was there today. today. Oh, okay. And yeah. you spoke to the neighbors? That was, I can't hear you. You actually spoke to some neighbors? Yeah, did I you? walked the property. He showed me. He was there at home. No, but, but Russ, you spoke to the owner. You didn't yeah, he was the there. Yeah, he didn't speak to the neighbors. He spoke to the owner. I spoke to the owner. Asking about the neighbors. And he said, I said, how's the neighbors? He said, they're fine with it. He says, you know, no problem. They're welcome, so that's what he said. That's what he told me. Hmm. I imagine that's what the certified mail receipts will let everybody right. know. Yeah, I mean, let us know that everybody knows about it. Right. Yeah. yeah, we can't make a final decision until we right. get those receipts so yeah. that we know people are notified. Right. Well, I think so. actually text no. them to see if they can get over here quickly, so we'll okay. see if we're... Yeah. I think the neighbor, the neighbor to the left is <laughs> elevated above... The, the, the above no, the, the neighbor, if you're facing the house, the neighbor to the left is downhill. Yeah. And then oh, yeah, yeah, Adam, right. Adam Iron lives up on the hill behind him. Back and then back across the street of the road. Uh, yeah, you're there. right. It goes downhill. Yeah. yeah. So it's up yeah. behind it, you're saying? So Adam Iron lives up on the hill behind him. And then down the hill, I, I'm not sure who lives there now. Uh, but they're, they're quite a bit downhill. Uh, tuck back a little bit. And the neighbors across the street were okay with it. Yes. I saw them at the, we had a fire installation Saturday night party. They were there and they said, yeah, De Who is that? They're Dennis, fine. Dennis and Ken? Yeah. They're all good friends there. Yeah, yeah, it's my last so, name. All, all, all his neighbors. Oh, really? All of the neighbors are friendly in that area? Because it's very close. I took a ride over there. It was very close. Yes. Yeah, I mean the houses aren't. They're very small lots. Yeah, too close. Yeah, I, I used to live down in the street. I had a fifty by hundred lot. Yeah, I would love to hear from the neighbor. I mean, the guy to the left. Uh, you know, I can understand your point. Yeah, I, uh, I think if he had, if they had a problem, they would have been here tonight. You know, to voice their. I mean, they are essentially concerns. doubling the size, aren't they? Yeah. On one level. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean, um, you know, on the footprint level, not yeah. the entire house. I understand. The house, yeah, the house is kind of, um, it's a two-story house, but one of the stories is kind of below grade. 
Yeah, it didn't look so like the, a two-story. So the back of the house would be the kind of the main level of the house at grade. And then you would have to dig down to get to the the first floor, if you will. The lower level. Yeah. Finish floor. Yeah, it's a, it's a bi-level. Mm. And do you have any pictures of, of any kind of drawings of what this is going to look like? You know, I do. Our, our, our office designed the addition uh, for him, so I um, I don't have them with me, you know, but I can definitely submit uh, the elevations of the addition and the context with the existing house. And the exterior is going to match the existing house, too? Yes. Not going to paint it hot paint or anything? Do I need to create problems? No. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> No, uh, it, it'll be contextual with the house and with the neighborhood. Right. Aluminum well, siding existing on that house? I'm sorry? So aluminum siding? Vinyl siding. Yeah. Vinyl? Yeah. Any other questions? Oh, none for me. All right, so the, the variances are um, lot area variance is 7,500 square feet existing non-conformity that we're dealing with minimum front yard setback variance of 32 there's already an existing 18 so we have a non-conformity there side yard looking at a 40 almost a 42 foot variance to the east we're looking at about a 14 foot variance to the west which has a non-conformity um, obviously both the side yards need a variance which would be 56 and the development coverage as we just said will be 27 percent which is will be a 2 percent 2.3 percent um, variance so those will be the six variances that will be required um, it's a type 2 action we do have the short form no other environmental reviews necessary 239 reviews not necessary um, Hearing no other further comments, I'd like to make a motion to close the public hearing. I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, we can make a formal decision, but what I'd like to do tonight is at least go through the five uh, part test so we have <laughs> that out of the way. And then uh, basically. Mr. Mr. Chairman, can I just interrupt for a sec? Sure. If we don't have proof of mailing, is it really appropriate to close the public hearing? That he is. So uh, they say he's. Yeah, I don't know that we should. <laughs> Maybe give him give him a minute. Um, normally, you wouldn't close the public hearing, or if he came and you found out that that was incorrect, you'd end up having to re notice yeah. or something. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'll keep it. You're gonna rescind your motion. I'll rescind. Yeah, we'll we'll keep it open. We'll rescind the motion. We'll still go through the five factor test. Sure. I have a couple other agenda items anyways, and we'll see if he shows up. Um, but thank you, that's Mark, that's a fair point. Um, all right, so whether an undesirable change will be produced in the character of the neighborhood or detriment to nearby properties will be created by the granting of the area variance, I would uh, opine the answer is no. Whether the benefit sought by the applicant can be achieved by some method feasible for the applicant to pursue other than the area variance, it sounds like uh, due to the ledge, the answer to that is no. Whether the requested area variances is substan are substantial, and the answer to that is yes, in my opinion. Whether the proposed variance will have an adverse effect or impact on a physical or environmental condition in the neighborhood or district, I believe the answer to that would be no. And whether the alleged difficulty was self-created, which consideration shall be relevant to the decision of the Board of Appeals, but shall not necessarily preclude the granting of the area of variance. And obviously it's self-created. The answer is yes. All right, so we'll um, hold on for a few more minutes while I go on to additional item agenda or other business. Um, first order of other business, um, just want to remind everyone that um, we need to have our annual training um, at least four hours every year. Uh, I know at least three of us were on the October 18th training, but 
records as I have it. Mark is uh, Mark won't matter anymore. Chris, we got you at one and a half hours on that 18th training. Um, I'm at four and a half, so I'm good on my 14 or my four. And Sharon, we have you at three and a half uh, session in January and the 18th session as well. So you'll need another half hour in there someplace. And then Russ, um, we have you at a May session at one and a quarter. So yeah, I've got two of them coming up next yeah. month. Okay, good. Sign up for two. Are there any um, Zoom ones coming up, Deborah, that you're aware of? I will look through and see if I can find anything out then. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> yeah, I think I think there are, I guess some stuff from the Department of Conservation and others, I see them all the time. Yeah. Or I know. Is there a place all, that I all, can? All of mine were Zoom meetings. I didn't do anything in person. Oh, you didn't? No, I did all mine in Zoom. Obviously, the one on the 18th, yeah. was the three of us yep. did. That was Zoom. I did one in April, and <coughs> September, and later. Okay. Is there a place that I can look just to be a little more proactive about it? Because I'm, hate to say this, I'm, I'm sort of <laughs> relying on Deborah. The DEC's website and yeah. the Department of State's website. The only problem with the Department of State's website is that they don't provide a That's certificate. A so, for Deborah, you're on the honor system. Well, what an honorable man. What, what, I, what I did, though, on one, I took, I just, um, I, I had the email registration and all that, and I sent it back. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. So, I just kind of pushed. Yes. No, I, I actually, I'd uh, like to offer some help. Uh, Monty Orange County Municipal Planning Federation, oh, okay. we provide the educational classes. It's been lax during the COVID right. period, and our transition this past year has been a little slow. But I will tell you, we will have confidence starting in 2024. We'll be sending out mailings for educational classes for credits. Uh, we'll be starting probably probably four every year, even in the fall. Yeah, because you used to have them up in Goshen all the time. It's I used to drive up to Goshen. But like I got to tell you, the, the webinar ones are pretty nice. Not from down here, yeah. down to drive all the way up to Goshen. Well, and especially nice a lot of them I've found have been kind of during work hours. Yeah. During like midday hours, yeah. which is difficult. Right, right. So, but but thank you, yeah, because you, you're right. Because I I've seen stuff from Rockland, but I haven't seen too much from Orange County. So it, it'll be you'll, you'll start seeing advertisements in January. Okay, good, good. Diane great. mentioned I think there was some up in Wappingers Falls or something. Yeah, there's a bit, there's one at Bonnie Franson that's still up in Wappingers, but that's you have to go up there, and I think that's like a half day or something. I'm like. Goodness. Yeah, it's also <laughs> I'm so used to yeah. an hour and change to get there. And it's like, yeah, yeah. yeah, and that's midday too. It's like, yeah, I'm not going to go to Wapen Juice. Midday. Yeah, yeah, they'd mentioned that on the one the other night. Yeah, yeah, juice. and I saw Bonnie was doing that one. I said, oh, I'm going to see Bonnie, but then I said, I'm not going to Wapen Juice. All right, so that that's uh, one item. Um, the other item is uh, I do want to uh, formally acknowledge and uh, thank Mark for his service on this board. Um, this, um, as he's communicated to me, will be his last meeting as he moves on to bigger and better things. So he may yeah, regret, he may I... regret, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. on that well, I so we, we accept your resignation with regret, but uh, wish you the best yeah. luck, obviously. Good and luck. Thank you, Mr. Side. Chairman. I, I'd like to be able to read my sure. uh, very brief letter of resignation. This is to uh, the chairman. Uh, please accept this memorandum as my letter of resignation from the Town of Tuxedo Zoning Board of Appeals, effective at the conclusion of today's meeting. It has been my pleasure to work with you, Deborah, Kelly, and the other members of the board since January 2019. I will miss the collegiality between the ZBA members as I embark on my new challenge as <laughs> yes, the mayor of Tuxedo <laughs> Park. Yes, I wish. I wish you and the other members success in your future uh, endeavors. Thank you all very much. Uh, thank you. Congratulations, thank you. Mark. Thank you. 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 Congratulations. Thank you. Um, roll up the sleeves and get to work, I suppose. <laughs> sounds, like it's sounds like the sleeves have been ripped off. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, we'll just have to. Yeah. Reply? A for effort. Did, right. he, did he reply? No, I'm actually texting his mother. Oh. I don't have his uh, cell phone number. Okay. I can. So if you have uh, cell, at this right. point, yeah, I, at I this can. Point. Point. We, have, we have a meeting next month, anyways. We have okay. a couple of people. So, yeah, we do. So it's not going to be just for this. Um, so we basically have everything set. Um, except for the receipts. So I would imagine be a quick decision next month. 
Um, pending no other comments from the public. Uh, the public hearing, I'll make a motion to hold the public hearing open to November, what's the date? 28th, I believe. November 28th. Um, we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, and then uh, we do have this and at least one, if not two more, the shed in the garage addition. Okay. So, uh, I'll be there too in November. That's fine. Yep, that works. They, both, it should be a quick meeting in November. Yeah, I know. You say that. <laughs> I know. Um, with that, um, I'll make we'll a comment. Oh, sorry. Uh, well, are you going to authorize the ZBA attorney to start the draft resolution? Uh, we, we have a draft already. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> fantastic. Okay. Yeah, we, 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 we kind of have it. We, we kind of lay out so we know what we want to make sure we got everything covered and then it just gets a little bit more crisper and tighter with votes and A's and A's and all that. But yeah, we're pretty much halfway there. Thank you. I, I tried to help you, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why, why do you think I sound professional? It's not because I know what I'm doing. I just, I read what Kelly gives me. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh, with that, I'll make a motion to adjourn at uh, 7.50. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Mark, thank you again. Thanks, guys.